you know the classic predicament. You want a job, you want an internship, but they require experience and you don't have experience because you don't have the job because you want a job in order to get experience. So how do you break out of that cycle and get in with no experience? Here's what I did. Before we dive in, I'd like to thank Springboard for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Springboard is an online learning and career platform that provides a curriculum tailored by experts that will allow you to learn all the core skills that a software engineer needs. Springboard is great if you're looking to enroll in a job focused program in software engineering, but they also have programs for machine learning, data science, cybersecurity, UX design with a real world application. They offer projects and assessments that reinforce your new skills and prepare you for a successful career in your chosen track. Something I really appreciate about Springboard is their tuition money back program. They are so sure you'll find a job in your desired field six months after you complete the course that you will get your money back if you don't. Another great thing about Springboard is that they understand that learning something new can feel a little lonely sometimes. That's why they have hundreds of coaches, mentors, student advisors, teaching aides, community managers, and tech support available 24-7 so that online learning never feels lonely to you. All this sounds great, but if you can't get a good job, then it doesn't really matter. That's why I love the fact that some of Springboard's graduates have gone to work at companies such as Microsoft, Colgate, Accenture, and Macy's, amongst many others. If this sounds like the right next step towards your goal, you can get $1,000 off your registration using the link in the description. Welcome back, I'm Antonella. I'm a software engineer who just started her career last year. I am 31 years old and I switched my career from fashion design to computer science. And now I work as a software engineer at Microsoft. It can feel so hard, almost impossible to get opportunities and get hired, get internships if you don't have any experience. Especially for someone who's switching careers, that can feel really daunting because not only are you having to bridge the gap between your knowledge and the positions you're trying to get, but you're also in your head feeling I wasted so much time doing this other thing and now I'm behind. You're not, by the way, but that's a pep talk for another day. In this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that I did in order to get a tech internship as a software engineer without having any professional experience. The first thing we're gonna do here is take out all the excuses. Take out that basura, we're not talking here about excuses. One of the biggest excuses that even I used to fall into was, well, no one's hiring me, so I don't have any experience. You can take that into your own hands. Let me just tell you. You don't need to get hired to have experience. And that was the first thing I learned. I'm glad I learned it very quickly. I hope you're learning it quickly. And if not, this is the moment when you learn it. Take your experience into your own hands. How do you do that to become a software engineer? Let me tell you, as a computer science student, you have such a huge advantage because it's not like medicine where you need to get hired at a hospital in order to do surgery. You can't just go out and do surgery on people, but you can code on your own, you can create your projects, you can volunteer, you can do so many things that are within your control. The first thing that I did when I had no experience and no coding knowledge was I started learning how to code on my own. I started going to community college, but I wasn't taking any programming classes yet. So I went in on my own. I studied learning through Code Academy. I started getting books out of the library. I got my first Java book out of my local library and I read the whole thing and I did all of the projects on that book. And so taking that into your own hands gives you so much more power than just sitting and waiting for an opportunity to fall on, on your lap. The same way that I took the initiative to learn and be proactive about learning, I did to have projects on my resume. So your resume, when you're just starting out, is not gonna show a bunch of work experience because you're applying to internships, it makes sense. But what recruiters wanna see is that you are moving honey. They don't wanna see a student that's just sitting in class. They wanna see someone who wants it, who enjoys it, who has passions, even outside of programming. So show that through your resume. Show that through the projects that you work on. What you're gonna do in order to get really clear on what personal projects you wanna create is you're gonna take a piece of paper and you're gonna have two lists. Your first list 
is going to have everything that you're interested in outside of coding. That could be hobbies like running or reading or dancing or singing or anything that you're interested in. Once you have your list of interests that you have outside of coding, you're going to create another list. This list is equally important. This list is going to have everything that you're curious about within coding languages, frameworks, stacks, topics. If you're curious about cybersecurity, if you want to go into machine learning, list it all there. What are you excited about? Because if you go into building a project with something that you find boring as hell, you're not going to finish it. Let me tell you right now, you're going to start it. You're going to put in a few hours. You're going to put in a few weeks, maybe, and you're going to find it dreadful and you're not gonna have the passion or the discipline to complete it. The way we're gonna make sure that you stick with it is you're gonna bring these two lists together, create a little Venn diagram and find where they meet. <laughs> That's my Venn diagram. <laughs> but find where your interests and the technology that you're curious about meet. So for instance, if you're interested in music and Python, build something that brings those together. If you're interested in money and cybersecurity, work on something that brings those together. And that is going to get you as close to a guarantee as possible that you are going to build something that you care about. Now finish that project and repeat that a couple times more. And you're going to have a resume that tells a story as opposed to just a random resume like all the others who just have someone who's learning how to code and who's going to school because there are thousands of those in a recruiter's virtual desk these days. But what you want to do on that resume is show who you are as a full individual. Crafting your resume and experience strategically in this way is what is going to start your journey into branding yourself, which is a huge concept that we can go into later on when it comes to your career and your presence within a company or a team. Now that we've covered what's fully within your control and you have a few projects up there and you've gained some experience let's go into your second step your second step is finding ways to get involved in community things team things something that is larger than just you working on your own this is also going to give another dimension to your resume that is going to make you look really good and it's going to give you great experiences to understand yourself better, to learn how to work with others, all that good stuff. How did I do that? Well, there were a few different ways. One was I volunteered to teach kids how to code in after school programs. And I also volunteered through the Microsoft Teals program. Along those lines, two other things that I did to gain experience were to get involved in school. So a lot of leadership positions at school, I started working as a research assistant, which allowed me to also work with PhD students and learn what that pathway is like and, and see if I was interested in that. Through that avenue, I was also able to gain recommendation letters from the professor that I was working with and build that relationship and that report and gain a mentor out of that as well. And the last thing I did was being a part of a ton of hackathons. I got together with friends that I already had I went into hackathons all by myself. I participated in a ton of hackathons to different degrees and got at least two really nice projects out of them that I was able to put on my resume. Interviewers asked me questions about those projects. So it was a really good way to bring everything together and show that I was able to pick stuff on the fly. Participating in hackathons is equally important as creating your own projects because they both show different things. One is showing your commitment and your depth of knowledge in a certain area. And then the other one is displaying that you can work well with others, that you can pick up stuff really quickly, especially if what you did during the hackathon was related to a technology or a language that you had never worked with before. Those are all experiences that translate really well to the workplace. I mean, we even have hackathons at work. Microsoft has their own internal hackathons, and I'm sure a lot of other companies do as well because it gives you an opportunity to get exposed to ideas, concepts, thoughts, projects, languages, technologies that you may have not worked with. It opens up a whole bunch of doors for you and it goes really well on your resume. So there you have it. Those are all the things that I did to stand out, to build up my resume and show recruiters that I was someone worth hiring, even though I did not have any professional experience. 
you just need that one person that one company to vouch for you and give you a chance and once you start getting that experience professionally it gets a lot easier but this portion of your career where you haven't been given that chance yet to show off what you can do is one where you need to be really intentional and put as much work as you can in that direction even if it means setting classes aside to be able to put this together within computer science that pays off a lot more than getting straight A's and not having anything else on your resume so those are my two cents about it. I hope you found this helpful. If you want to hear more about my experiences, there's other videos that I already have up about my journey and I will be posting more. So make sure to leave in the comments anything you want to hear about. Thanks for watching.